The year is 1991. I am negative three years old. What do these two things have in common? Well, if you guess not much, you'd be right. Um, except that same year, a game called Street Fighter 2 came out and permanently changed my life. How? Well, keep listening. Dang, dude, stop rushing me. In the 80s, arcades were dying. And while I could tell you the exact same story a bunch of other gamers have talked about on YouTube, I feel like a couple people have kind of nailed that, and that's not really my focus here. I just want you to keep that death in mind. Because actually, games got kind of sick as hell in the 90s. And one of those games at the front of the pack was Street Fighter 2. This phenomenon, this death and then rebirth, is called a lot of different things, but we're just going to call it rebirth of video games. And I know I'm yada yada a lot of this, but the important thing here is that Street Fighter 2 ensured fighting games were here to stay, and seriously, just Google Death of Arcades or something when we're done here, because there's like so many people that have covered this, and that just ain't me right now. So let's jump forward a couple of years, specifically eight damn things. The year 1999. Me? Well, I'm a cute little five-year-old now, and I'm obsessed with video games. And there's like a lot kinda going on with that obsession, but that doesn't matter. What matters is arcades are back to dime, and my uncle, as uncool as he was, managed to snag a couple sweet arcade cabinets for cheaper than normal. Uh, Popeye, Donkey Kong, Miss Pac-Man, uh, couple more, and while they were all really fun, none of them mattered. I had eyes only for Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3. Should I have played this incredibly gory game? Absolutely not. Doesn't matter, I was tearing people's guts out or jumping super high into the air and slamming them on their heads like the ultra-violent crackhead I was meant to be, and little did I know, but I'd be coming back to fighting games all these years later. The year... 2011. Me? I am now some gross, big-headed douche who's uh, super scared to do anything uncool, but I was given a copy of Mortal Kombat 9 for the Xbox 360, and it's just as cool, if not cooler, than I remembered Mortal Kombat ever being. The fatalities were gory, the minigames were bumping, and now there's training modes in them things. I was hooked. I mean, seriously. I was playing King of the Hill with my friends. I was playing Ranked. I was getting my ass kicked in King of the Hill and Ranked. And while I was still an uncool baby boy about losing at the time, I did realize that this could mostly be remedied if I just went into the training room and learned a few things. And at the time, all I practiced were combos. See, I thought learning combos would help me win more, which is what I really wanted when it came to playing my friends, and that's not cool or, like, good for my mentality, but it's what it is. Uh, so I became obsessed with learning how to do the most damage for every single hit on any character I happened to play. I became super, super, just so fucking obsessed with being like the best at training mode possible. This obsession with training mode, and specifically this obsession with winning in competition, was fueled by a lot of different emotions, both healthy and unhealthy. But I don't think that my logic was bad. If I did more damage per hit, then I would need less hits to win than my opponents. Where I messed up was thinking I just needed to learn combos. I think that this is actually a pretty common trap most casual fighting game players such as myself fall into. So let me tell you now if you're interested, there's so, so, so much more to winning than just learning combos. But that's an aside, and I have no interest in becoming a fighting game content creator, and I'm also just not good enough to tell other people how to improve. What I really wanted to say was that the training room became this weird sort of zen place for me as a child, and I finally put enough spin on this ball of a video to deliver the line I wrote around. Um, growing up is hard. Fighting games aren't. See, when I was young, I was an anxious, shy, easily overwhelmed child who didn't have a dad and moved around a bit, so I didn't really settle in anywhere until I was in high school. And I don't blame my dad or my mom for those circumstances, and I love them both a lot. That's just how it was for me growing up. And while I'm still anxious and I do get overwhelmed sometimes, I've formed coping mechanisms that help me isolate my problems, deconstruct them to their barest parts, and then tackle that itemized list of issues head on. 
If you're asking what this has to do with fighting games, well, here's your sign. It, isolate my problem, deconstruct it, tackle that son bitch. Look, I get that maybe launching training room and only ever practicing combos isn't the best way to improve at a fighting game or whatever, and that some sweat lords are going to automatically disagree with the actual use of training rooms in general. But there, I think there's something sort of monastic to be found in just launching your favorite fighting game and practicing something that challenges you. Not so you can listen to your friend gripe because you killed him off a stray hit, but because improving any individual skill is important for us as human beings. It's why I'm here in 2022 with that good old pal seasonal depression and so many other things to worry about around the corner telling you to launch a fighting game and try it for yourself. It'll be okay. You ain't gotta play anyone and win all the games ever or even think about doing those things on Amiibo main stage. You just gotta go out there, be the little dude you're meant to be that day. And while I kinda lost the plot a little bit, I feel like this is a pretty organic stopping point. Now go on and get, you little rascal, before I give you a big ol' smooch on top of your head. And maybe, before you leave, consider liking and subscribing. I don't know. I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there. Anyway, have a nice day.